Good Morning Jesus Center. We're praying this vitamin boost brings timely encouragement into your life today and enlightens and empowers you to be the amazing person God made you to be. We love you. The Greek concept and the Hebrew concept of perfection are very different. Uh, the Greek concept of perfection speaks of being flawless and faultless. But the Hebrew concept of perfection is to be trusting in and tied to God. So here's the bad news. If, if we, uh, None of us qualify for the Greek definition of perfection. But here's the good news. All of us are candidates for the Hebrew concept of perfection. Uh, we, we can tie ourselves to God. We can put our trust in God. You don't have to be perfect to pray. Prayer perfects us. Remember when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples? Did he command them to take a bath before they stuck out their feet? No, just as is, their feet are covered in dust, animal droppings, uh, and God knows what else, maybe cut up, maybe blistered up, uh, bruised up. But all they had to do was lift up their feet to Jesus, and he took care of it as is, as is. Now, feet and heart have a number of things in common. They get dirty. They can be smelly. Um, man, man, just... Ask my wife, you know, that they could be smelly. Uh, they can bleed when it's injured. It can be bruised, and when there's a bruising, there's increased sensitivity. And when they aren't taken care of or attended to, they're wicked. They're wicked. Now, prayer, here's a classical definition of prayer. It's endured for all these centuries because it has that much substance. Prayer is the lifting of the heart and mind to God. It's the lifting of the heart and mind to God. Again, you don't have to be perfect to pray, but it's prayer that perfects. Uh, so I'm not sure the state of your heart or the condition of your mind. It may be like dirty, smelly, cut up, bruised up, blistered up feet. Uh, your heart, how's your heart right now? Your heart may be broken, it may be polluted, it may be preoccupied. Have you been there? Uh, anxious, your heart may be angry right now. But you're still invited to pray, to raise your heart to God, to stick out those feet, if you will, and you'll receive a perfecting. You'll receive an energizing. I don't know what your, where your mind is right now. Your mind may be so busy, confused, tired, full of these cobwebs, and yet you're still invited to pray. And when you raise your heart, when you raise your mind to the Lord, you receive a perfecting. And an energizing. So I have a question for you. Uh, what is your heart tied to right now? Let me follow that up with another question. What is your mind stuck to right now? It's easy to have our heart and mind tied to or stuck to people, uh, disappointments, offense, uh, these distractions, perhaps entertainment, uh, anxiety, work. However, you know, if you're tied to those things, we run out of energy. We get exhausted. But when you lift your heart and mind to God and tie your heart and mind around God, then you'll be like an eagle that's carried by the wind, as Isaiah chapter 40 promises. An eagle does not expend its own energy. It's brilliant. It runs on the energy of the wind. God's spirit is likened to wind. We're not supposed to run on our human energy, on our human effort alone. We're supposed to run on divine energy. So when we run on his energy, uh, life seems effortless, graceful, light, fun, and fulfilling. But when we're running on other sources of energy that comes from our ego or offense or greed, lust, anxiety, it yields activity temporarily, but the flight is not smooth and the flight cannot be sustained. So let God's spirit energize you. Now God's spirit is within. God's spirit is within. It's, that it's, wind is from within. That's good news. That means we don't have to depend on external sources. The wind is within. Wind produces energy. That's why there are windmills. Now we just have to make sure that wind keeps blowing and that we're not breaking the wind. Another metaphor for the Spirit of God is a river. And rivers produce energy. It's called hydropower. And Jesus said in John 7, verse 39, whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his heart, again, from within, will flow 
rivers of living water. And this he spoke of the Spirit. So this energy comes from the Spirit and therefore from within. Here. So what we have to do to catch the wind is we just raise our heart and mind to God. It's called prayer. You can do it loudly. You can do it silently. Uh, but as you raise your heart to God, then your heart starts to wrap itself around God, be tied to God, and then you catch His wind, and you're energized by the Spirit. Thanks for listening to today's Vitamin Boost. Have a love-filled day, and we hope to connect here again tomorrow.